Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a pretty much fully assembled Simple Core Redux. The files are officially on printables, so you can find them in the description below. Uh, I have kind of been doing some testing on this printer, doing some tuning and whatnot. I'm happy with build of the printer. I do have issues with my particular uh, printer with some of the parts that I used. So we're going to talk about that a little bit um, in the video. But uh, I've decided to switch over to direct drive. The only reason being is um, I think this is what most people are going to build is the direct drive version. Also, Boombox is an incredible extruder, but I wouldn't consider it simple. And again, I think most people are going to go towards the simple method and just go with a direct, direct drive extruder that they like. I'm using an HGX Lite here. It's, I have a bunch of these lying around. Um, Sherpa Mini should also fit. I believe the mounting holes are the same. There might be other extruders that will also hit this, also fit this mount size. Um, so I would highly recommend if you're going to be using a bamboo hot end on this printer, just use the AT4 cowl here and assemble it like I have. You'll get a really nice print quality and that type of thing. And if you do decide to go with the HGX light extruder, they're quite inexpensive with motor and stuff like that. But like I say, you can do a Sherpa Mini or different extruders. You also, it should be very easy to make modifications to the little mount here. So you can mount whatever direct drive extruder you want. There's plenty of room at the top of the printer for the Bowden tube and stuff if you're going to be putting panels and whatnot on there. I am using a FunSor 110 volt uh, build plate. It's very, very nice. It's eight millimeters thick. It's been, worked out really great for me. Uh, pretty good value. I also ordered a Genuine Crowdy K1 um, smooth sheet there. And I do have the PEI that came with the fun sore bed as well. Both of those are working awesome. I have Beacon, of course, fully working, all that kind of stuff. I might make a short video of it going through its sequence. I get perfect first layers all the time. My bed mesh is really working well now. I'm very happy with that. Um, I unfortunately am going to be taking this printer completely apart and rebuilding it with a different frame. Now, in my previous video, uh, I had mentioned that the 2020 extrusions that I have here, they're not really that great. They're quite um, frustrating to work with. And that's because these 2020 extrusions aren't entirely a flat across the extrusion. Um, and I had basically shown these little lips on the edge here. And I had a couple of people commenting that you just should be using like the spacer tool or the alignment tool, which of course I always use. You can see here I have an MGN9. And if my phone will focus here, you can see it, it does not want to sit flat at all in this. Um, of course, I always do use an alignment tool. And yeah, you can align it to some extent. However, once you tighten these down, they will skew. It doesn't matter if you're using an alignment tool or not. I don't know if this is because a combination of the linear rails that I chose to use and these extrusions. I can't really think of a time where I've had this issue before, but that being said, it's been a while since I built a simple core, like that was like three years ago. Um, and as I had mentioned, Misumi and like LDO extrusions like this one here. Again, if my camera will decide to uh, focus on this, you can see there is no little tiny lip on the inside. Um, these extrusions will actually fit perfectly flat on them. Uh, there's, there's no wobbling back and forth. They're ultra flat and when you tighten them down, you'll get a nice flat rail. So. Be very careful when you're buying your extrusions. Um, if you do end up getting a scenario like me, you can make it work, um, but it's gonna take you a lot of back and forth. I myself in particular, um, my Y rail is, is relatively okay. However, my rails do bind a little bit as they move back. And that's because the rails are actually tilting in a little bit and it's skewing some things a little bit. Um, 
I'm going to be completely taking this uh, printer apart in a, like I say, using a brand new frame. Um, I'm hoping to either get LDO to make frame kits for this or Funsor. I am happy to say that Funsor does have a pre-order right now for Simple Core Redux frame kits. These are fully blind joint, really nice extrusions. I will have the link in the description below. If you're looking to grab yourself a uh, frame kit right now, it's a pre-order. I'd also really like to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. PCB Way is not just a PCB manufacturer. They offer CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. Let's take a look at their 3D printing service. You can simply upload your STL file. Let's uh, do a simple core Redux part and let's do a A4T bamboo cowl. We choose our quantity of one. Let's do ABS. You can choose some colors here and we can go ahead and order this ABS part printed for us by PCB Way. If you need help with your next project, check out PCB Way for more. Uh, Funsor has said that potentially they'll have 20 kits available on AliExpress. So these will give you the best way to build Simple Core. Um, or if you're in the United States, try to source some Misumi or Misumi clone extrusions. I know there are some extrusions um, that do exist that are Misumi clones that don't have these ridges on the sides here. Um, you can even get them in Canada, but they only come in 1000 millimeter lengths. And I don't have the tools to properly cut them uh, precisely enough to, to make a really good frame out of it. But again, I just wanted to show that off that uh, it, it is really important to try to get high quality uh, extrusions like the LDO ones here or Misumi ones. They don't have a groove. They're completely flat on the inside. And MGN9 sit perfectly fine. The other option here would be to use MGN 12s on the Y. So potentially there could be a mod for that. And then with some foam tape, we would just space out the panels on the side so they don't hit the MGN 12 carriage. That's probably the best way for everyone to just be able to use whatever extrusions they found. Um, I know Chaz is working on all sorts of variations and stuff for this. So if you're interested in this printer, Again, definitely join my Discord. That's where you'll find the latest information. Um, this is kind of the final official video of this printer. It is quote unquote done. Um, the files are unprintable, but there may be updates coming, right? To different things, different options for all of you building this. Um, and like I say, there may be certainly an MGN 12 mod for the uh, actual XY carriages so that you can have an easier time building and, and try to basically have the printer operate as best as you can. But uh, like I say, there's nothing actually wrong with the inherent design of Simple Core Redux. Uh, this is a really nice polished version of my Simple Core Legacy. I have all my rear panels on there. This is gonna be a PLA printer for me, um, just kind of like a PLA workhorse. I'm gonna just set it in the corner of my basement and I'm never gonna touch it again. I'm just gonna turn out prints. That's why I'm using Beacon and I want this to really just be like click print and forget. So as an example here, here is my X1 carbon. This is a um, one of the tools for Simple Core to actually align your linear rails. And here is a print off of Simple Core Redux. Um, you can see they're actually quite similar in print quality. Uh, of course, these both are not gonna be perfect. I'm, I've not finished dialing in. But for mechanical parts, they're pretty much close enough to how I would want them. Um, as I said, I do have some artifacts and such on my prints that most likely will go away once I reassemble this and I'm able to get my Y linear rails uh, properly aligned. But nonetheless, uh, the print quality is very nice. Both of these are at 0 0.16 layer height and the Simple Core Redux can actually do this faster um, with slower speeds because it doesn't have a really long setup time like the X1 Carbon. The X1 Carbon goes through vibration calibration and probing the bed, 
with the nozzle takes a long, long time. So you're saving all of that. Beacon is very quickly, we can do like a three point tram, do a actual beacon scan and then print. Um, very, very nice. I use the beacon start G code, which works very well. And uh, I'm very happy with the layers that I'm getting. So I have, of course, I'm gonna keep this printer and I'm gonna keep doing more videos on the prints. So I may do shorts, things like that to show off the print quality once I start fine tuning it, things like that. I really want to um, build the new frame with blind joints and I'm most likely gonna put corner plates across the entire frame. Again, I'm not enclosing this. I'm just gonna have a back panel and a bottom panel like this. So I'm most likely gonna go around in addition to the blind joint frame and I'm gonna use these flat corner plates as well to make the frame absolutely rigid, rerun input shaper, um, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is kind of gonna be a long-term project for me, but I wanted to make this video and just tell all of you that SimpleCore is officially out on printables. It's an awesome printer. Um, I think you're gonna see mods, more and more mods coming in um, to make changes and kind of build the printer how you like. Uh, I would suggest if you're kind of building this printer kind of stock-ish, go ahead and use my AT4, um, A4T, I always get that wrong, A4T tool head. Uh, the files are on printables and also on the SimpleCore Redux page. If you're using the Bamboo hot end, it's just a no-brainer. And I highly recommend using the Beacon Probe as well. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're not cheap for a reason because they're good. They're probably one of the best probes that you can get. And if you just want a set and forget first layer, I've been very, very uh, impressed with how well this works, how the calibration works and how fast it is. Um, so I highly recommend spending the money on that if you want to. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. Definitely hit that notification bell for my YouTube channel, subscribe. You're gonna see, if you're intrigued in this printer, you're gonna see a lot more videos um, of like prints. Like I say, I'll probably show off some videos of Beacon working um, and that type of thing. And I wanna show off the printer printing. Um, so there's going to be future videos on that, even though this is kind of like the final official build log video, this is a wrap up. I also would like to do a live stream for all of you with the printer in the state that it's in right now so that you can ask more questions and learn more about the printer, see it print live, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely subscribe um, and hit that notification bell. Um, if you'd like to support me, if you'd like to support the channel, definitely check out my Patreon link below. And I will catch you all on Discord. Thanks everyone for watching.